Welcome to iLecture Online and here's the next segment in how we figure out the magnetic field caused by moving charges in line segments. Now in this particular case we're going to go and figure it out from a small line segment. So how much of magnetic field is caused by a single little piece of a wire carrying a current of 10 amps 20 centimeters away from that line segment and 5 centimeters above the wire. So let's draw this out so we can see what it looks like. Here we have a current carrying wire. Let's say that current is moving from left to right, I equals 10 amps, as given. We now consider a small little segment on that wire, and let's say that it has a length DL, a small little line segment with length DL. And the DL, let's say that's equal to one millimeter long. And we want to find the magnetic field at a position 20 centimeters in front and five centimeters away from the wire. So let's say that this distance right here is 5 centimeters and let's say that this distance from there to there is equal to 20 centimeters and so what is the magnetic field equal to at that location? Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is find the direction of the magnetic field because that's relatively easy. Since the current is moving from left to right and it's positive current, at least to be assumed, then we know that we use our right hand rule, we point our thumb in the direction of the current, our fingers will point in the direction of the magnetic field, and it looks like at that location the magnetic field is coming out of the board, so let's indicate that like so. So here we have a magnetic field coming out of the board, we indicate that by the tip of an arrow. Now what about the magnitude of that field? Well, starting out with the equation that we use for single point charges, we can say that the, um, the magnetic field B is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times the size of the charge multiplied times the velocity cross B oh, not cross B, I'm sorry, that's the velocity cross the unit vector R divided by R squared. So now we're not given the velocity of the charges, we're not given the size of the charge, we are simply said it's a section of DL, so we have to convert that equation. How much charge is being carried by this? How do we figure that out? So let's take this portion of the equation right here. So we're going to take this part of the equation and we're going to show you how to adapt that for our particular problem right here. So we end up with Q times V cross R. Like so. Now Q is charge and how does that relate it to I? By definition I is equal to charge per unit time dt. So if we change this like so, if we say well Q times V and V can be written as uh, distance over time like so and of course distance is still a unit vector cross R and then we move the dt underneath here we can say that this is equal to Q divided by dt times X cross R now we can say that Q times dt is the same as the current running through the wire so this can now be written as the current I and let me move out of the way so you can see that so I move the dt underneath here now this is equal to the current I times X cross R Okay, now, oop, I move this around, this should be the x cross r. Now, this here is caused by this line segment right here, so instead of writing x, we're going to write dl because it's really this little segment, segment that we're interested in. So this is equal to i times dl cross r, like so, that's unit vector, and now we can go ahead and replace what we have up here by this quantity right here. So this can now be written as mu sub naught over 4 pi times, instead of Q V cross R, we're going to write I times DL cross R divided by R squared. Now everything else is still the same. This is still the unit vector in the direction to the point of interest from the part that's causing this magnetic field. So if we draw the R vector right here, this is the position vector R, and this here is the unit vector R, like so, and now if we, and of course this is a little line segment DL, if we now cross DL cross R, we get the length of DL 
times the length of r times the sine of the angle between them. So we need to find theta. So now this can be written as, this is the b field. If we now find the magnitude of b, this is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times the current times the length dl times the length of the unit vector r, which is 1, times the sine of the angle between them, theta, all divided by the length r squared. All right. Now we're given the length dl, it's very small, and as long as dl is small compared to the distance away from this line segment, we can go ahead and make that substitution. We need to find the angle theta, and we need to find the distance r. Now since this is a triangle right here, we can use Pythagorean theorem, we can say that r is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the sides. So this here is 20 centimeters, we can square that, plus this here is 5 centimeters, and that will give us the length of r. If we then square r, that means this is squared, we'll take out the, the uh, radical. Okay, so we have r. Now we still need to find theta. Theta, by definition, can be found by taking the arc sine, or maybe the arc tangent. That would even be better because we're given the opposite side and we're given the adjacent side. So we, say, we can say that theta is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So in this case, that's equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side, which is 5 centimeters, divided by the adjacent side, which is 20 centimeters. So what is that angle? Let's find it out. So we have 5 divided by 20, and take the arc tangent of that, and so that is 14 degrees. So we know that theta is 14 degrees, and we can find r. So we have 20, we square that, plus 5, square that, add them together, take the square root, and it's 20.6, so r is equal to 20.6 centimeters. Plug in those numbers in our equation right here. This is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amps times the current in the wire, which is 10 amps, times the line segment dl, and it's 1 millimeter in length, of course, we have to convert that to meters, that would become 0.001 meters, times 1, times the sine of 14 degrees. And take the whole thing and divide it by 4 pi, times the distance, which we said was 20.6 centimeters, that becomes 0.206 meters, and we have to square that. And notice unit-wise, amps cancel out, meters times meters and meters squared cancel out, and we end up with Tesla. So units is okay. Now, working out the rest, we can already cancel the 4 pi and the 4 pi. So, we have 1 e to the 7 minus times 10 amps times 0 0.001 times the sine of 14 divided by 0 0.206 squared equals n the magnetic field caused by that little segment, line segment is equal to 5.7 times 10 to the minus 9 teslas. So here you can see we have the magnitude of the magnetic field and the direction of the magnetic field. So recapping, we were given the quest to find the magnetic field caused over here 20 centimeters away and 5 centimeters above a wire, we have to find it for a small little piece of the wire called a little line segment, DL. It has a certain amount of current, a certain amount of charges running through the wire at that very moment. To find the magnetic field caused by then, we start out with the equation that calculates the magnetic field caused by a single charge, a single point charge. We adapt that equation over here by saying that QV cross R, V can be written as distance over time, the distance can be replaced by the line segment dl, and if I write q over dt, that's the same as the current, so we, come we get the equation qv cross r, and we turn it into i dl cross r. And then we plug in the numbers. This is still the same, we plug in the current, we plug in the length of the line segment, the unit vector r is equal to 1, and the sine of the angle between them, divided by the distance to the point of interest squared, plug in the numbers, and you get the magnitude of the magnetic field. So that's how you do that for a small little line segment. 
All right, the next problem, we're going to try and find a magnetic field near a longer piece of wire, not just a little line segment, but a longer piece of wire. Let's see how to do that on the next example.